Hello, and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 build video. This video, I'll be going over my Storm Sorcerer. This is a versatile AoE caster build that focuses on dealing lightning and thunder damage while keeping light on its toes throughout combat. So, without further ado, as always, first I'll go over the class levels, and then I'll follow that up with all the items to look out for throughout the game. Also, sorry if I sound a little different in this video, I'm still a little sick, and so my voice is probably going to sound a little different. So, normally, I start out with character race recommendations. But, this time around, I don't really have any, since none of the races have any relevant advantages for this build. So, moving directly on to the build and its ability scores, I've opted for this ability score spread. But, of course, feel free to change it as you see fit. This spread gives me good charisma and constitution, while still giving me decent dexterity for my initiative rolls, and decent intelligence for the wizard levels we acquire later down the line. In the early game, before we acquire those wizard levels, you may want to swap the intelligence and wisdom scores to make more efficient use of your stats, but it's up to you. At level 1, we start as a Tempest Domain Cleric. This grants us the Wrath of the Storm passive, allowing us to retaliate with lightning or thunder damage on attackers. Additionally, this class gets us heavy armor and martial weapon proficiencies, ensuring that we can use all gear that we come across. At level 2, we start multiclassing into Storm Sorcery. This gets us the Tempestuous Magic passive, which allows us to constantly reposition and stay light on our feet in combat. At levels 3 and 4, we gain our Sorcerer Metamagic, of which I got the most use out of Twin Spell, Distant Spell, and Quicken Spell, but these are mostly at your discretion, so pick the ones you think are most useful. At level 5, we gain our first feat. For our feats, I recommend the following option. Starting off with the ASI for the plus 2 to Charisma, this is always never a bad choice. Alternatively, instead of using a shield, you could opt to take the dual wielder feat in order to make use of dual wield weapons for their passive bonuses. Elemental Adept Lightning is decent in theory, but in practice I find that not many enemies are just resistant to lightning damage, instead tend to be either fully immune or not resistant at all. And finally, Warcaster is always a decent choice to help maintain concentration on our spells. Moving forward to level 7, we gain our Heart of the Storm passive. This makes us resistant to both lightning and thunder damage, while also increasing our lightning and thunder damage output. In addition, we gain some new spells, including one of our most important spells, Call Lightning. Call Lightning allows us to keep up our damage output, while conserving spell slots in combat thanks to its recast feature. At level 8, we circle back to Cleric, this gets us our channel divinity, Destructive Wrath. This allows us to spend our divinity charges to maximize our lightning or thunder damage. At level 9, we multiclass into Wizard. This gives us spell scribing, allowing us to learn spells from scrolls permanently. I would also like to note here that I recommend doing a quick respec, as we want to respec and take our cleric and wizard levels before we take any levels in Sorcerer. This is because we want our most recent new class to be Sorcerer, so that our item spells use our Charisma stat rather than our Intelligence. At level 10, we can either take the Evocation or Divination Schools of Wizard. Evocation Wizards gain Sculpt spells, which allows them to avoid damaging allies with their Evocation spells. Alternatively, if you're playing solo without any allies to hit, or you don't mind casting around your allies, we can go the Divination School. This grants us two portent die to alter enemy and ally dice rolls with. These die can allow us to force enemies to fail saving throws against our spells, thus increasing our damage output, especially against enemies who might have otherwise saved our spells. And finally, to cap off the build, we go two more points in Sorcerer. This grants us another feat, for which my recommendations are the same as earlier. And that's all for the levels. I'll now be moving on to the items you want to look out for throughout the game. There will be minor spoilers about the item locations, so if you don't want to be spoiled, you've been warned. 
So, starting out, my Assistant 3 has the items from Act 1. Beginning with the weapons, the spell Sparkler makes Magic Missile an extremely threatening high damage spell in the early game. Additionally, if you take the Dual Wielder feat, you can use Failure Aluve for its Shriek ability to increase your damage further. The Warped Headband of Intellect will not be useful right now, but can allow for stat redistribution later on when we start multiclassing into Wizard. The Protecty Sparks Wall is decent if you want to opt for using clothing and mage armor rather than heavy armor. Alternatively, for heavy armor, the Adamantine Splint Mail can help make you very tanky despite the fact that we are a caster build. The Gloves of Belligerent Skies can combo well with the Spell Sparkler Magic Missile combo to help deal even more damage and prone enemies. To amp the reverberation even further, the Boots of Stormy Clamor also add to the previous synergies. The Callous Glow Ring can add additional radiant damage to our magic missiles if the enemies are lit up. For amulets, the Pearl of Power amulet can help with spell slot management. The Psychic Spark can further amp our magic missile synergies. And finally, the Necklace of Elemental Augmentation can amp our cantrip damage. It is important to note that at the time of recording this, the recast of Call Lightning is treated as a cantrip, and thus receives the cantrip only benefits from certain items like this one. Now, on to Act 2. Helping out for Act 2, we have Returning Assistant Quincy. Starting out with the weapons, the Infernal Rapier increases our spell save DC, and gives us a decent melee option if we find ourselves in melee range. The Darkfire Sharpbow grants us some additional resistances as well as access to the Haste spell for free. The Sentinel Shield can help us raise our initiative significantly. The Fistbreaker Helm increases our spell save DC by 1. The Cloak of Protection increases our AC. The Dwarven Splint Mail raises our constitution thus giving us better concentration saving throws. The Evasive Shoes raise our AC. The Spellcrux Amulet helps out with spell slot management. And finally, the Amulet of the Harpers is always a decent defensive option. Now moving on, we have one with the items for Act 3. Starting with the weapons, the staff with the name I will not even bother trying to say is the best staff as, in addition to its other great effects, it allows us to utilize Chain Lightning once per short rest for free, which is very crucial considering we can't learn Chain Lightning with our Sorcerer levels. For secondaries, if you took the dual wielder feat, Rhapsody gives us a plus 3 to spell save DC once fully stacked. You can't stack this on inanimate objects anymore, but do remember there are an infinite number of refugees walking around to utilize for stacking the weapon. Uh, no one is allowed to take that sentence out of context. For shields, Vaconia's Walking Fortress has the best defensive stats in the game. For helmets, the birthright increases our charisma by 2. Or, alternatively, the Hood of the Weave, which increases our spell save DC by 2. The Cloak of the Weave further increases our spell saves, making it the best option for us. If you choose to use Clothing and Mage Armor, then the Robe of the Weave is the choice for you. Alternatively, if you choose to use Heavy Armor like I do, the Armor Persistence will give you the best defensive stats. The Helda's Gloves increase our spell save DC, even if we can't make use of its other effects. The Amulet of Greater Health greatly raises our constitution and gives us advantage on constitution saving throws, making it great for maintaining concentration while spellcasting. The Amulet of the Devout both raises our spell save DC by 2 and grants us an additional channel divinity charge to utilize Destructive Wrath with. And finally, the Ring of Feywild Sparks, while it doesn't look like it would be useful on paper, it actually has a hidden secondary effect of raising our spell save DC by 1, thus making it very useful to our build. And that's everything. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want more content like this. I release build videos every Friday, except for when I don't. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!